So let's think about surface area and try to figure out how surface area depends on mass. And the reason that we're interested in surface area is that the idea is that metabolic rate is uh, determined by surface area. So we would expect metabolic rate, however that depends on mass, to be the same as how surface area depends on mass. And the argument goes that creatures generate heat um, through metabolism, and they have to get rid of that heat so they don't catch on fire or melt. And the way they get rid of heat is by um, uh, losing heat through their surface. And so how big a surface area you have is what determines how big a metabolic rate you can have. So let's think about surface area. So uh, surface area. I'll use S for surface area. Surface area is proportional to L squared because it's an area, so it's two-dimensional. Now mass is proportional to volume. Maybe I'll use this squiggle for proportional. And um, right, so if a creature's volume doubles, its mass doubles. So um, what about volume? Well, volume is proportional to L cubed. Its volume is a three-dimensional thing. So that means that mass is proportional to L cubed. Um, which uh, also means if I take the third root of both sides, So mass is proportional to volume. Volume is proportional to L cubed. That means mass is proportional to L cubed. And I can take this relationship, take the cube root of both sides, and get this. So now let's go back to thinking about surface area. So surface area is proportional to L squared. But L is m to the third, or it's proportional to it. So m to the third squared. And that gives me this relationship. Uh, we multiply these exponents. So this tells us how surface area depends on mass. So. Um, if you double something's mass, its surface area would go up by 2 to the 2 thirds power. So um, if metabolic rate depended uh, was controlled by surface area, we would expect metabolic rate to control uh, to scale like this. So let me write that statement out. If. So if the metabolic rate is determined by surface area, and by determined here I mean that that's the main limiting factor. There's going to be some variation from organism to organism. And as we've seen, the data doesn't fall perfectly on a line. But that the main determinative factor for the metabolic rate is surface area, then we would expect metabolic rate y to be um, to scale with m to the 2 thirds. But that's not what we see. Um, we actually see that m scales to the 3 quarters power law. So what is observed is that the metabolic rate y scales as the mass of the creature to the 3 quarters power. So the question then is, where does this 3 quarters come from? And I'll talk about that in the next couple of videos. For now, I want to mention that um, this 3 quarter, um, 3 quarters here in the exponent 
is estimated from data like this, and I'll show you cleaner data in a little bit. Um, so it's not uh, an exact result in the sense the way this is. It's exactly 2 over 3. Here, what we find is that the slope is very, very close to 0.75. Maybe it's 0.74, maybe it's 0.76, but it tends to be consistent with 3 quarters. So um, this, as I said, poses a puzzle. Why is it that metabolic rate scales as a three-quarter power of mass? For many years, that was accepted, and still is accepted by and large, as an empirical fact. That just happens to be how the relationship is. But there wa um, wasn't a strong, compelling uh, explanation for how this might arise. So in the next couple of videos, I'll step you through uh, an argument for why we would see this sort of scaling relationship. Um, before then, there will be um, some quiz problems where you can practice working with this relationship and with this relationship.